But I absolutely love TVs and movies, their possibilities, what they can represent and mean to each individual, but mostly for the entertainment value. Unfortunately, over the past few years, there have been fewer and fewer compelling stories released with dull characters, illogical storylines, plot holes, MacGuffins, and all the subtlety of my Uncle Sal flirting with the Chili's waitress. But one that definitely kicks this trend is Ted Lasso. Every once in a while, creators manage to remind us why we love television, why we give up one night a week or countless weekends to invite complete strangers into our home and escape from reality, even if it's only for 30 minutes. Ted Lasso is a masterclass in compelling storytelling, dynamic character development, subtle exploration of complex themes and relevant social issues, and joy of joys, it's thoroughly entertaining. Ted Lasso was the much-needed respite from the current climate of dark and sinister shows like Ozark, Tiger King, You, and whatever true crime flavor of the month is dominating your recommended. No disrespect to some of these shows, but it was as refreshing as a nice afogat after a lighthearted show that comes along, make you laugh, cry, angry, and get smiley all within 30 minutes. And it's not some money-grabbing remake or half-hearted rebranding of an old IP for modern audiences. All right, it's based off a 2011 NBC promo, and the plot starts off the same as Major League, shout out Wild Thing, but it's made itself something entirely unique and does what all great IP should do, inspire. There really seems to have been some disconnect between Hollywood writers and reality. I don't know if they got smacked upside the head or something, but it's weird to say because TV does require some suspension of disbelief. All great works of art are definitely based in reality. Rather than showing viewers through compelling storytelling, well-thought-out dialogue, exploration of complicated themes and messages, the current state seems only to know how to tell you significant plot points, explains character development, and is about as on the nose and overbearing with their personal viewpoints as my great Anne Marie when you bring home a manja cake to meet the family. If you thought Rings of Power was a masterclass, then Ted Lasso ain't for you, although it will welcome you in with open arms. You don't have to be a fast, fit fan of football to enjoy the show. One-dimensional characters dominate the screens, from present-day Marvel, new Star Trek, or Velma, the current state of Lucasfilm, and anything directed by Rian Johnson, most characters in modern features have about as much depth as the Holiday Inn kiddie pool. Unlike Brady's balls, Ted Lasso characters are anything but flat. Ted is more than just an overly positive male lead. Even Beard states he's just a man with complexity and hardships. Rebecca begins the show as the antagonist, but as it progresses, we see all aspects of Rebecca. Vulnerable, loving, compassionate, but strong, brutal, and vengeful. When it's revealed that Higgins was the linchpin to Ted's plans to unite the team, you can fully understand Rebecca's sudden retreat back to a cold and hostile individual again. Not because she's just some vindictive and angry character, but because in that moment she feels vulnerable and betrayed once more from somebody she thought was close to her and she thought she could trust. The show gives subtle insights into characters' insecurities and vulnerabilities, their passions and reasoning behind the decision-making, rather than being spoon-fed by nanny state writers and showrunners telling the audience exactly what they should think about each character. That's the beauty of Ted Lasso. It's uniquely enjoyable for each person. You can interpret each character as you like. From Ted's imperfect marriage, father's suicide, professional success at the hands of personal failure, to Jamie's struggles growing up without a father and the burden of the talent that was his only way out of a dead-end life. Nate's shyness and need for validation stemming from the acceptance he desperately craves from his own father, and Keeley struggling with professional and personal relationships, all the way up to Roy's shift from the traditional strong and silent type shout-out Gary Cooper to taking on the burden of leadership. We love every single character because they are relatable. They make decisions, even if illogical, it's still as a result of their past experiences. Relationships between characters seem genuine, and it gives weight to each theme explored within the show, especially when it comes to fathers and sons. It's nice to see a show that is willing to explore some male-centric ideas and storylines at a time when even mentioning the Y chromosome will get you isolated quicker than accidentally sneezing in public. I swear I'd rather shit myself on the bus than sneeze than what looks I get. And it does it in a way that doesn't beat you over the head with its messaging. Kaiser's sozaying its way into your brain while still managing to keep more progressive ideas at the forefront. Not always with the greatest success, though. There are some moments where the writers or showrunners' virtue hits you like Uncle Sal's cologne at a night out at Chili's. Sam's quips about colonialism and Christmas, to be precise. And oh, madon, the stupid relationship between Sam and Rebecca, which no matter how many times I watch, I still can't get behind. And it's not because of the age, but it's the explicit disregard of power dynamics. I can't help but feel that if it was an elderly male owner shags female starlet, the attitude would be very different. But beyond that, Ted Lasso is a masterclass in exploring complicated themes, where there is no right or wrong answer. 
and bringing the viewer to emotional reactions that feel well-deserved. Everything from Ted's dart game, Rebecca and Ted's in unison stories about their fathers, Nate's progressive turn from lovable loser to arrogant antagonist, and every interaction between Jamie and Roy culminating in the fatherly hug Jamie needed his entire life. The emotional payoff in each of these small and major revelations are entirely worth it because the writers, actors, and showrunners have created compelling and complex stories. They've taken time to provide the audience with small insights into each character. Just like No Nose Tomato Garden, they've taken the time to nurture and grow each character, each plot point. Each significant emotional and story moment hits you like a wooden spoon across the face when you've sampled too many of Ma's meatballs that were meant for company. Each moment is also helped along by Tom Howe and Marcus Mumford's brilliant soundtrack that just nudges the viewer in the right emotional direction. And I ain't too man enough to say that I got goosebumps listening to some of those. All in all, there are plenty of themes explored by Ted Lasso, from being a good person to the change you'd like to see in the world, personal and professional development, athletics, competitions, overcoming hardships, to love, friendships, and the relationships between parent and child. It's compelling storytelling, the new standard for dynamic characters portrayed by skillful actors, and lets each viewer experience the show in their own way, not treating them like some misbehaved child that needs to be told what to think and what to do. The show as a whole feels like a person. It has become a mate, from its characters to stories to themes. It surpasses 30 minutes of screen times into a welcome visit from an old friend that will leave you missing them once they're gone, but smiling because it happened. You can clearly see the passion the cast and crew has poured into their work to skillfully create a piece of art, just like Michelangelo's David. Meh. What do I know?